level 8.7, here is some whole class feedback for you from the remote learning task two that you have completed. Part of this remote learning was for you to carry out um, a quiz. And most of you have sent that back to me now, which is excellent. So this is based on the fact that most people have sent in their answers. I am aware there are still a couple missing, but hopefully you will still find this whole class feedback helpful. So I'd just like to start with things that I was really impressed with that you did um, in your answers of the quiz. Overall, everybody that submitted their work gave some really excellent examples and the detail for some of those questions, especially the Industrial Revolution and slave trade questions, I was really, really impressed with. I've just picked out a few specific students who managed to kind of show this detail in their answers that I want to highlight. So Alex C gave some really detailed points to try and explain what the Industrial Revolution was. He's picked out the fact that the population grew, he's given examples about new inventions or, or um, machinery, he has um, outlined that this has an impact on British trade, he thinks about the impact of this in terms of new roads and transport, so it's a really lovely answer that gives a good range of examples to highlight what the Industrial Revolution actually was. Lots of you gave really brilliant answers to this. And in particular, I'll just mention a few of you. Um, Grace, Casey, Livia, Iris, Alex D and Isabel, your answers were really detailed as well for this question. So well done. Anthony, I picked out because he's given a nice answer to highlight why paintings were often idolised and romanticised in Victorian um art and he in particular is really focused on this idea that we talked about in class that actually paintings were were made for people that could afford to buy those paintings and people didn't want dreary pictures on their wall of depressing scenes and um, instead they have actually want to have idolized pictures of family life and and prosperity so Anthony's sort of picked that out and he's used a previous topic that he studied to give an example of an alternative type of painting that could have been um, painted. Obviously, if we're going to focus on the Industrial Revolution, you might want to put an example in there about the poor conditions that people were suffering during that time period, um, during the Victorian period. Um, but equally, I like what Anthony's done, just trying to think about previous topics that he's studied. Other students that gave really good answers to the slave trade questions in particular were Mia and Georgia. But I've just picked out Alice's to show you as an example here um, because she has really thought about that piece of work we did in class where we looked at making sure we didn't overgeneralise our statements. So Alice has clearly gone back to her original work and used that to help her formulate her answer. So she's included detail like West Africa. Uh, sorry, that should say Africa on my point. That's my typing mistake, not Alice's. Um, so West Africa. And um, she's focused on the fact that she's not being generic in her phrases, that all slaves came from Africa as an entire continent. Um, she also goes on to say that slaves mainly worked on plantations. And again, she's thinking about the fact that there were lots of different types of roles for different uh, people that were forced into slavery. She then goes on to give examples of the type of work they might do. And I haven't uh, included the whole of her answer, um, but hopefully this just gives you a little bit of a taste of the detail that Alice has included, which made her answer really good. So in terms of what you need to do now, year eight, is look back at your quiz results, look at what the answers were that you put in that remote learning task two. And I want you to compare your answers to the correct answers that I have emailed out to you 
but they are also saved on Microsoft Teams in our class notebook section. And I'd like you to make any corrections to any of the answers that you um, didn't get right, or if there's any questions that you need to add a little bit more detail to, I'd really like you to go back and do that. So for example, thinking about Alice's work, uh, where she's written about West Africa rather than Africa. Um, and also, I just want to highlight in particular an outstanding um, test result, which was Oliver's test. Um, and I was really, really blown away by what you wrote, Oliver, because every single answer you gave was in a huge amount of detail. So when I'm asking you as a class to go back and add detail to your work, I want you to think about some of the things you could do like Oliver did when he answered his Industrial Revolution question. He highlighted what the Industrial Revolution was in terms of changes. He thought about that word revolution. He also looked at positive and negative consequences of the Industrial Revolution. And I could really see that he'd used his previous classwork to make sure that he was highlighting different consequences for different groups of people in society, men, women, children. Um, so I think it's really important to think about what you studied in class and use your exercise books to find that extra detail and go back and add it into your test answers. Misconceptions. Firstly, Please be careful not to just copy and paste work off of the internet. I appreciate you're at home and some of you might not have your exercise books with you, so tasks are a little bit more tricky. But even if you're using websites to help you, you shouldn't just copy and paste something off of, say, BBC Bite Size straight into your test answers. You should think about what it means and you should think about how you can phrase the answers using your own words. So please be careful of that because a couple of you, I can see that your answers are not the way you would normally write. Um, and all I need to do is copy the words that you've put in your answer into the internet and straight away the website comes up that you've used. So please be careful of that. Question number 21, pretty much all of you got this correct, but I just wanted to highlight in particular um, the order of events, just in case you did struggle with this. Some of you got the Renaissance and Henry VIII um, muddled, uh, purely because obviously we know that Henry VIII was uh, king during the Renaissance. So I think some of you might have thought it doesn't matter which way round they go. But technically, we're thinking about the Renaissance as a time period um, as a whole. And therefore, that did start, even though historians slightly debate when it started, it did start before Henry was king. So just be careful of that one. Spelling mistakes. Um, on the whole, there were very little. Um, and I was really impressed that you all took the time to make sure that you spelt some of those key terms correctly. But revolution did come out with a few spelling mistakes. Some of you are writing revolution with an E-R or revy. Lucian with a VE rather than revolution, so just be careful of that one. And then also Parliament. Interestingly, this is a word that lots of students spell incorrectly, so really take care when you spell the word Parliament. It's got an A in between the I and the M, Parliament. So just think about that word, think about where the word Parliament comes from um, to talk, to discuss and that might help you remember how to spell it. So well done, Year 8. Well done for submitting your work. Now you've just got to go back and try and improve some of your answers or correct some of your answers. And another well done to Oliver for his really outstanding test. Good luck. Well done.